Hello and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video, I'm going to be going through anaerobic respiration. So if you are new here, click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. So anaerobic respiration, this is respiration in the absence of oxygen and it only occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. So unlike aerobic respiration, where the majority of the stages occur in the mitochondria, anaerobic only occurs in the cytoplasm. Now it's slightly different for animals compared to plants and microbes, and we'll have a look at both of the reactions. But what they do have in common is for both um, types or three types, I should say, plants, microbes and animals, they all begin with glycolysis creating pyruvate but what the pyruvate is converted into is different in plants and microbes because they have slightly different enzymes compared to animals the main purpose is to release small amounts of ATP but the key is to oxidize NAD and that is so that the NAD can be used in glycolysis again and again so even though there's no oxygen the respiration, the anaerobic respiration can continue. So let's have a look in more detail. So I've put here the stages of glycolysis. And if you haven't seen my glycolysis video, I've linked it here so you can look at that first. So this is glycolysis. This happens in anaerobic and aerobic respiration, and it occurs in the cytoplasm. So you have your glucose, it is incomplete breakdown of glucose and we have pyruvate. Now that pyruvate in aerobic respiration would then enter the mitochondria and go into the link reaction um, and then you'd have the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation. In anaerobic respiration, it's a much, much shorter process because it is only the incomplete breakdown of glucose. And once we have pyruvate, the next step is that pyruvate will gain a hydrogen. And therefore, we'd say that the pyruvate has been reduced. So it gains a hydrogen, and that is because it's a proton and an electron. That's why the pyruvate has become reduced. And in animals, that then creates the molecule lactate. Now, when that dissolves in liquid, that is lactic acid. The key then is this is producing a net gain of 2 ATP, and that is from glycolysis. The purpose of this stage is to reoxidize the NAD. And that's so that NAD can then be used again in glycolysis so that glycolysis can continue to happen even though there's no oxygen present and therefore we still get at least two ATP molecules. Now this can't go on indefinitely because lactate it is an acid and it will eventually start to denature enzymes. So anaerobic respiration cannot occur forever, but it does mean that even in the absence of oxygen, for a short period of time, you can respire anaerobically and still make small amounts of ATP. And the key is that the reason we convert pyruvate to lactate is so that you reoxidize NADH into NAD so glycolysis can continue. Now, in plants and microbes, the only difference is because of the different enzymes involved, that stage actually results in ethanol and carbon dioxide being produced. But it's still the same idea. You get a net gain of 2 ATP. NAD has been oxidized again, so glycolysis can continue. And ethanol is also toxic, so if this was to occur um, for long periods of time, the ethanol would denature enzymes involved in glycolysis and all respiration would stop. So it's only able to occur for a short period of time. The final thing you need to be aware of is efficiency. So I'm going to compare anaerobic and aerobic efficiency. Now, some of this information is extra than you need. So, for example, this top point is not actually on the spec, but it just helps put the information into context. So we have here one reduced NAD 
can result in a yield of three ATP molecules. And one reduced FAD can result in a yield of two ATP molecules. And this is linking to oxidative phosphorylation in aerobic respiration, which I'll link up here if you haven't seen my video on that. So what that means is in aerobic respiration from one molecule of glucose, you should be able to make 38 molecules of ATP. Now that's actually only 32% efficiency, which isn't very high. And the reasons for that are listed below. So first of all, in oxidative phosphorylation, protons are meant to be moving through the ATP synthase by facilitated diffusion. However, some can leak across the mitochondrial membrane. Also, ATP has to be used to actively transport pyruvate and reduced NAD into the matrix. And finally, some of the energy is lost as heat. So that's why aerobic respiration is only 32% efficient. Anaerobic respiration is even less efficient. And that's because from one glucose molecule, because glucose is not fully broken down, you only get two ATP molecules. So it's far less efficient. And that is your reason why. You only have the two ATP molecules which are produced in glycolysis. So that is it for anaerobic respiration. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up.